welcome to day 15 of our 30 day coding challenge here from CS and Math. And uh, this is our halfway point. So if you have been following through each lesson, you have done 14, and this is the halfway point at 15. Uh, we are going to finish that spiral of Theodore's project by adding color. Um, we're going to clean up the code by adding structure and some functionality. And also talk about some makerspace possibilities, depending on the tools you have access to. So let's jump to it. Now, this is the code that we left off at. Let me just scroll through once if for some reason you just found the video and are joining us. So that is the code that we had. Again, and it works. It's a little bit uh, kind of fragmented, so let's just clean it up. We have the setup code, which this length we're not really going to change, right? That is just an incrementing value. We probably could just declare that in the setup. This B value, this length, is really part of the building of the triangle. So I'm actually going to package that into, it'd probably have to be the first line here, because remember, uh, A is based on B in this case. So I'm going to declare B every time at, at 50. Um, yeah, that's probably fine. I don't like that it's hard-coded in there, but we can leave it like that. And, um, you know, one thing we're going to do, this this function works but some of it actually just draws a triangle so what might be better is if we build um, a definition a function that says the definition of uh, call it triangles uh, maybe even right triangles how about that and we could have that function take in parameters we're not I'm not I don't really think we need to do that here um, we're actually going to leave off this incrementing, but all of this code here actually builds the right triangle, right? Each each different right triangle. Um, so I'm going to cut that and I'm going to paste it up here. And again, if you were, let's say, tabbed in here and pasted it and your tabs got off, just make sure everything is aligned in one tab. So now if this definition called right triangles, um, First of all, let's rename it. This this is now a function that draws each right triangle. And <clears throat> if that's the case, all we're going to have to do is for our for loop here, which is going to draw the spiral is for item in range two let's keep calling uh right triangle i guess i would have liked to now almost call it draw right triangles but this is fine and then we're going to increment the length up by one and just loop through it so let's try that remember this is a definition it doesn't execute until we call it down here uh, which we talked about in some previous videos. So if I run this, I got it set pretty slow, but it does the same thing. So I'm going to let you get set up with this structure. I like this structure better, and we'll regroup here in a minute. Okay, so what I did here, and hopefully you pause and get caught up. If you didn't, you should. Uh, what I did for the setup is I set the speed to zero, which again, does as fast as it will go made uh, the pen a little thicker so that it would draw a little uh, thicker lines. I just said two, you could do three. Uh, the length is set there. This function draws each right triangle and uh, has the trig and the um, Pythagorean theorem in it. And then this one actually draws out the spiral. And if you played around with these, which I'm guessing you probably couldn't resist the temptation to do, uh, notice how it's the 17th one that starts kind of uh, overlapping the other. Not that that's bad, because um, uh, if you r run this just an arbitrary number of times, this spiral is actually really cool even when it overlaps, right? Uh, remember, we have the functionality to change the uh, size of this outer leg. We'll call it B, let's say, to something smaller, right? So you could get this showing up in different sizes. Now, again, I don't love the way I decided to code that in, but I don't know. I just decided we were in quite a ways, and I didn't want to change it at the time. But um, I'm going to go back to 50, 
And I'm going to do, I just wanted just one shell, 16. So we have this wheel or shell or whatever you want to call it. Now I thought what would be good for this is to add some color. So I'm going to talk about another way to do that different from what we had done before. We had done a list back in like, I don't know, let's say video three or four. I'd have to go back and look. But notice this pattern we've been following the whole time. By the way, if you ha know what student made this, I don't like stealing work. So go ahead and shout at me and uh, we can add credit. But they did um, purple, pink, blue, purple, pink, blue, purple, pink, blue, which is something um, very common that people want that repetition. A list would work really good for that because then you could just keep pulling items from lists, which is how we did it before. Oops, I actually went to my courses. But um, let me show another way to do that, and I'm going to pause and get that set up for a little bit <clears throat> just to make it a little faster. Okay, so for randomizing, what you can do is import a package or module called random. And uh, I don't know if you know how RGB works, but um, red, green, blue. Uh, there's elements that go anywhere from 0 to 255. So uh, we did t.color before. So right within my definition of triangles, I'm actually going to do... Or actually, I don't have to put it here. I could do it... <clears throat> I could probably do it in the spiral. This isn't how I did it before. But right here in the in the spiraling effect, I could say, well, each time I loop through, I just want to change the color. Now, what I did there was I paste in, uh, pasted in this long... I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, I pasted in this long uh, chunk of code that says um, t dot color, and the first color, the um, this t dot color um, command can can take in not just like blue or yellow or green like we did before. It can take in uh, a value between zero and two hundred fifty five. So what this chunk of code here does is say, well, pick a number for the red. Uh, 255 would be all the total amount of red you can get, and zero would be no red. Uh, this second one would be green, anywhere from zero to uh, 255, and then a third one for the blue. So this is an RGB randomization strategy. And so now if I ran this code, I'm going to pull that back. Part of the code will be hidden, but I went through it, so... Notice how it's going to just randomly choose. So we've got a way to add some nice color that way. So go ahead and try that. Okay, notice that you can add color in different ways as well, which I'm going to, I was testing this to make sure I was good on without any errors, uh, which is a good thing to note. I do make a lot of errors just like anybody else. A lot of times in the videos, I just test it out, make sure it's working so that I don't, so the videos go a touch faster. Um, one thing I was playing around with, and you could too, let's say you don't want as much red in your in your design. You could make it so the red doesn't go up as high. Notice this is largely just blue and green. Um, you could make it so that that value all but goes away. You know what I mean? You, or you could just set it instead of random, just set it to zero so there's no red. So you could play within this quite a bit to, to kind of color coordinate even randomly how you might want to. I do want some red, so I'm going to leave it at 255. And then what I did is um, I just went up into, there's a couple places you could put this, but I just went up into the tri triangle function. And in a previous video, we said one command for T, which is my turtle, is to begin filling it. So T that begin fill. And then at the end of drawing the triangle, I would say after each triangle is drawn, I would be T dot fill. And then if I run this, each triangle after it's drawn will fill with the random color. So this is where I thought we'd end off today. And again, this is a great place to, to just add color and variety and different structures to make it fun, like the project was supposed to be for kids. And I wanted to end with just some makerspace suggestions. Let me kind of get that up to make that last chunk fast. All right, so what I chose to search was like Spiral Theodorus laser engraved. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, I didn't find much of that. What I found was a lot of things uh, 3D printed. So you could take your picture. Notice how this would be without the fill, just a thicker, bolder line. So let's say you did a line thickness of three without the fill. You could actually bring that image into uh, 3D printing software, 3D print the design. Um, just so you can see it, this is something that is laser engraved, right? They engraved the bottom of this dish with some 
stuff from the periodic table. But uh, if you have never done this, I searched just a second one with just a laser engraver after it. And this is what a laser engraver looks like. Uh, I usually have access to them, but I don't given our current uh, setup right now. But um, notice that these are some good pictures. They just laser into different things, cardboard, plastic, glass, and you can laser your art in there. Uh, if you don't have these things, though, you could easily just print it, right? You could copy and paste it in, into a Google Doc and print it. And once it's printed, you could have kids make the art just like they always did. And they got the coding experience, plus they'll get the uh, drawing and creative release. So we don't have to just make this about the coding. We can keep it into a maker project and make it awesome for kids. Uh, and it'd probably be a three, four day project. So, Well, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you tomorrow. Oh, and don't forget to hit that uh, like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, and if you really are liking it, visit us at csmath.org. Thanks.